Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you the two charts that everyone should see before they file for Social Security. You know, we often hear the term Social Security maximization, but for those of you who have followed me for a while, you know that I have some serious problems with that term for several reasons. I think it's impossible to separate Social Security from the rest of your retirement income picture and actually make a good choice about filing for Social Security. It has to all be considered together. So I'm not a big fan of looking at the Social Security decision in isolation. And the software programs that are out there to help plan for retirement are really bad about this. It seems like the answer they always produce is just file at 70. And it's not just the Social Security calculators that are bad about this. The truth is that professional software that's used by almost all financial planners does the same thing. Whatever the scenario, it's always recommended that the higher income earner should delay until 70. Boom. Done. Wash your hands of that decision and move on to the important stuff. But I think that's an awfully short-sighted approach that results in a retirement income stream that isn't nearly as efficient as it could be. So today... I want to show you a very simplified example of why integrating the filing decision into your overall retirement income plan is so important. And again, this is a very simplified plan, but it is a real plan, so I didn't just manipulate the numbers to get the results I wanted. A client and his wife hired me not long ago to create one of our retirement roadmap plans. Now, they were planning to retire at 62 and wanted to get $7,000 per month in net income and then adjust that every year for inflation. His Social Security benefit was about $3,000 at full retirement age, and his wife's benefit was $1,200 at her full retirement age. Now for savings, they had around $400,000 in a joint investment account and about $750,000 in his 401k. Now, retirement was getting pretty close for this couple. They were both about to turn 62 and retire, but Something I said in one of my videos made them want to get another opinion. Now, they had already visited with three other financial planners, and all three of those planners suggested the same thing on Social Security. They said that this couple should file for benefits at 70, and then between 62, when they retired, and 70, when they filed for benefits, they should get their monthly income from their retirement savings. Now, the rationale behind this was that once their Social Security turned on at 70, they wouldn't have to take as much from their retirement accounts and most of their monthly income needs would be met with their Social Security benefit. So in doing that, they would lower their taxes because after age 70, they'd be able to get most of their Social Security benefit with very little taxes. And since that advice lined up with what this couple had already seen in the Social Security software they had purchased and everything they had read online, they determined that filing at 70 was after all gonna be the right strategy. But then one of them saw my video, how social security software leads to bad decisions. And based on something I said in that video, they decided to engage me and my team for a retirement roadmap plan. One of the first things I told them was that we needed to at least look at the numbers for filing at other ages. I've done enough of these plans to know that unless you test different filing strategies, you really don't know how it's gonna come out. Sometimes it'll even fool me just when I think I can figure out how someone should file based on simple criteria I do in my head. We combine all the factors and something pops up that I didn't think about. So I always test these out to see. Now, in our initial consultation, I could tell that they were both pretty dead set on filing at 70. They were convinced that this was the age that would give them the best overall result. But that changed when we showed them two very simple charts. These charts showed how various filing ages would affect their retirement balances and their total taxes paid in retirement. And I want to show these to you. Now, my goal is to keep this simple and clean, so I'm taking out all of the filing ages except for 62 and 70. And keep in mind that whatever age they filed for Social Security, the amount of net income to them would be the same. So, for example, if they filed at 62, part of their $7,000 monthly income would come from Social Security and apart from their retirement savings. But if they delayed until 70, then all of their income would have to come from savings up until 70. Then once Social Security kicked in, the amount they were taking from their retirement accounts could be reduced pretty drastically too. So let's see how this worked out. First, let's look at their cumulative 
taxes paid in retirement. The yellow line is the cumulative amount of taxes they would pay if they filed at 70. Now, you can see that right at first, there's very little in taxes, and this is because they had the joint brokerage account, and their taxable income was mostly below the capital gains threshold. But then at 67 or so, the taxable account started to run dry, and they had to start taking distributions from the IRA, which is all taxable income. And this caused the taxes to start increasing. Now, let's look at the total taxes paid if they would have filed for benefits at 62. Now, in this scenario, the accounts with the preferential tax treatment would have lasted longer, that joint brokerage account, and thus there would have been very little in taxes up until age 71 when that account started to run out. Then the lines would gradually start to get closer and closer because in this scenario of filing at 62, more the income would be coming from a taxable source, the IRA, than it would at 70. But for this couple, they'd be 89 years old before filing at 62 would cost as much in taxes as filing at 70. Basically, if they lived to age 90 and the tax laws didn't change beyond what we know right now, filing at 70 would cost slightly less, but it's really within the margin of error. So I'd call that a wash and say that the tax cost is about the same if they lived to age 90. Now, if they die before, the tax cost of filing at 62 would actually be less. So that's part of the data that's important in making a decision, but not really conclusive enough to be the determining factor. So let's look now at how their filing age would affect their overall portfolio balance. Again, the yellow line is their total balance if they file at age 70. You can see that it takes a pretty big dip in the early years, and that's because they're taking all of their income from their retirement accounts. And now look at the account balances if they file for benefits at 62. It's nearly a straight line. And in fact, by the time they hit age 70, there's nearly a $500,000 difference in the account balances. And by 85, this is a $688,000 difference. This is simply the time value of money at work. And it really highlights that in some cases, by trying to maximize Social Security, you are minimizing your retirement savings. And the reverse is true as well. By minimizing your Social Security and filing early, you could be maximizing your retirement savings. Now, some of you may already be looking at the numbers and thinking, I'll bet he's using a really big rate of return. In fact, I'm not. The returns modeled out here are the JP Morgan capital market assumptions, which are working on an average of about a 7.4% rate of return. Now, does it always work out this way? Absolutely not. We cannot assume that filing early is always going to be the most advantageous strategy. Just changing one or two assumptions could easily swing this the other way for this couple where filing at 62 didn't make as much sense. For example, I've never thought the goal of retirement is to die rich, so I also talked to them about increasing their retirement income. Now, sometimes that's tough when you've had your head down working and saving for 40 years. Spending what you've accumulated can be pretty frightening. But if they were to increase their income needs, that would likely change the comparison as well. The other thing that could change this for a client would be if they had a pension or a different mixture of taxable and tax deferred accounts or their income needs were different or a few other factors. The simple truth is when you're trying to figure out when to file for Social Security, there is no one size fits all answer or rules of thumb that you can use. Everyone's situation is different, but automatically ruling out filing earlier is not a prudent approach to retirement planning. There's a consequence to filing early and there's a consequence to filing later. And I would encourage you to be fully aware of how all of these decisions come together before you retire. Your retirement deserves to be well planned out and thought out. You know, I often say that getting ready to retire is like planning for a long road trip. With today's technology, the first thing any of us do before a long trip is to look at the route on Google or Apple Maps. That stretches that blue line from where you are to where you're going. And based on that, you can tell how long it's going to take, if you need to plan to book a hotel, where you need to stop for meals, and even look at alternate routes. You know there'll be other little decisions to make along the way, but you could plan a lot of the big things in advance. And that's exactly what a written retirement income plan should provide. This document should tell you year by year where your income is coming from, how much it should cost you in taxes, and what your final balance should be. With a properly drafted plan, you shouldn't have any doubts 
about the sequence of distributions or the dates you need to file for Social Security. And if you're getting ready to retire and you don't have a plan like this, you should. If you want your own plan that's going to make sure your money will last, be tax efficient, and tailored to your spending goals, you need to get in touch with me and my team. We'd love to help you with a plan that simplifies these decisions and gives you the confidence to move into this next phase of your life. If you want to get your own plan, there's a link down in the description where you can read more and you can book a meeting with me personally to talk about it. I look forward to seeing you on the schedule.